Hi, thanks for tuning in today. Today I want to share some thoughts with you about translations that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. And by that I mean I wouldn't recommend them for your everyday use as your as your go-to translation. You could use them for a supplement or even almost like a commentary. But these are translations that use a process that's called dynamic equivalency. And that would be a translation like the NIV or you know, the message is probably more of a paraphrase. The New Living Translation would be another example. The problem with these translations is that they get too interpretive sometimes. And you take a passage like 1 Peter 4.6. 1 Peter 4.6, I'll read it to you from the uh, Young's Literal Translation. For for this also to dead men was good news proclaimed, that they may be judged indeed according to men of the flesh, and may live according to God in the Spirit. Now, there have been three major interpretations that have been offered of 1 Peter 4, 6. What does it mean for good news for the gospel to be proclaimed to those that are dead? The NIV weighs in on it, in its translation, adds a word that's not in the Greek, and I don't think is justifiable uh, based on what the Greek t- text says, now, it might be a solid interpretation. In fact, of the three major interpretations that are on offer, I think that it's one of the most viable interpretations. But it adds the word now. So the NIV translation would present it that the, those that are now dead, that is from Peter's vantage point. But that's only one possible interpretation. Now, some of this goes on in just about any translation. So when you're going from one language to another language there is difficulty in getting all the ideas across. So Dan Wallace has said that when you're reading the Greek text, that you have a set of interpretive possibilities, exegetical possibilities, which are a different set. It doesn't tell you which set is correct, but it's a different set than you get when you're just reading it in English. I think one of the tricks and challenges of translation is to leave as many of those interpretive options to the reader that's there in the original. So sometimes when you're reading the Greek text, syntactically, grammatically, there's options that are available to you. But if you translate it in such a way to give so much clarity, and this is what happens with some of these translations, is they try to give so much clarity to the text that they end up interpreting the verse for the reader. And so let's take some another line from Peter. Peter says that there's some things in the Apostle Paul which are hard to be understood. So if you're reading a translation and everything you read in the Apostle Paul, from the Apostle Paul's writings, is easy to understand, then I suggest that your translation is doing too much of the work for you. There are some things in the Greek text which, is, which are naturally ambiguous, not exactly um, plain to the reader. And sometimes when translations work so hard to give clarity, and we understand why they want to do that, can appreciate that to a certain extent, but when you go to adding too many words, and almost any translation's not going to be able to get it exactly word for word, and I understand that, but you can go too far in trying to give clarity to the meaning of the text, and you'll only see. So if you're reading your NIV and you're reading 1 Peter 4, 6, now maybe the NIV has picked the correct interpretive option here, but you're not able to even consider any of the other interpretations that's uh, available. So I'm currently studying 1 Peter 4, 6, but if I were only, you know, if I were not able to read it in Greek, or if I only were using an NIV translation, I wouldn't even realize there's difficulty to be wrestled with in 1 Peter 4, 6. So translations like the NIV, the New Living Translation, the Message, uh, the infamous now Passion Translation, some of these are not too helpful for you when you're doing detailed research in the Scripture as your primary uh, translation. Some other translations, I'm not sure I'd ever recommend the Passion Translation ever at all, But translations like the NIV, the New Living Translation, others like this might be useful to you as a a supplement or something like that, but I do not recommend these to you as your primary translation. So that's it for tonight.